ancient cosmology, we are not using modern knowledge to read ancient scripture. We are using ancient knowledge to interpret ancient culture. So in ancient cosmology, meaning the science of the origins of things, in ancient cosmology, the we will realize is not ancient cosmology does not address modern question. <clears throat> we have a lot of discovery. Is it two billion years old? Is it this or that? It's not a scientific thing, is it? And it was not meant to be a scientific thesis. One of the things that you will note when God was speaking to ancient people at that time, and this is again another important thing, He never upgrades or updates their knowledge of things. What do I mean? During those ancient times, the people does not know the difference. The people did not realize that the stars were also sun. And God never corrected them on that. The people at that time also believed that the earth was flat. God never corrected them on that. Now, you might say, but I see there's a word there that it's, it's, uh, uh, it's round. If you really look at that word, it says that it's a spear. <clears throat> so they, they believed that the earth was flat. My point being is, God was using their knowledge and understanding of things to talk to them. They never knew that the sun was farther than, than the moon. They believed that the sky, during the, at that time, was solid. That's why it can hold water. That's why the gods can stay there. And, 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 and the sky was solid and the mountains was like the pillar that holds the sky. And that is their understanding. And God never corrected them on that. They believe that their knowledge, their understanding, their emotion came from where? Their intestines. Their liver. In fact, the, the, the word mind, if you like, it, it means intestines. God never changed their knowledge. It's not an upgrade of technology. God was revealing to them certain truth and speaking to them in words that they can understand. I, I don't know if you're following me. Are, are you following me, ba? <laughs> I'm trying to expand. I'm, 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 I'm placing the groundwork of my assumptions, kasi. That's why I have to be kind of clear on this. Lest I be criticized of not being faithful in my explanation of Scripture. Alright? Um, <clears throat> so, it's... <clears throat> There is no hidden scientific revelation there. Because a lot of times, man right now will look at Genesis and, and with their knowledge of science, they will now interpret what it means. Right? But the question there is, if that is the intent of God to reveal certain scientific truth, what truth is true? Because you know science, it always progress. Diba? But now ngay, we believe that the earth is round. Paano? Uh, 5,000 years, not discovered. No, it's really square. <laughs> but you know, it's unheard of now. As much as then, it's unheard of that the earth is... So which truth will God reveal? The point is, he's not revealing addition.
conventional truth about their knowledge about science. He is talking to them based on their level of understanding of things. You wouldn't talk to a five-year-old using a high school language. If a five-year-old would talk to you about math, probably you'll only discuss one plus one, two plus two, three plus three. You will not talk about algebra or trigonometry. You will not. Same is true with Genesis. God was speaking to them using ancient understanding, using their understanding of things. This is how you understand things. Therefore, I will talk to you based on your understanding of things. Follow? Now, so we have to realize the first point that Genesis is all about ancient cosmology, ancient understanding of the origins of things. So when God was talking to them, he was talking to them using their intellect, their vocabulary, and their knowledge. Second point I want to make. Now, regarding ancient cosmology, <clears throat> meaning ancient understanding of the beginning of things. How do you know something exists. Because we're talking about creation, right? We will be talking about creation. The question right now is, how do you know? Again, sorry for belaboring my introduction, but uh, I hope after explaining all of this, and as we go to the verses, it will click. Okay, that, that is the desire. How do you know that something exists? <coughs> Typically, you sense, it. you sense it, right? In some in some case, you can see it. Oh yeah, sense, right? Right? You touch it. How do I know that this might exist? There's a mind. There's a physical attribute to some things. But the thing is this. Viewing existence based on that is a modern understanding of things. Because there is another way of viewing the existence of things. I give an example. A company. A company does not have a physical attribute. It exists. It could have a building, but sometimes a building it does not exist there. Right? It has a is it it has a uh, SEC blah 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 and uh, and the SEC says okay you're the company is the paper the company it's like a, it's like an idea it's it's not really there but it's there right so what that means is this the question of ontology is what does it mean for something to exist? What does it mean for something to exist? And the question in, in ancient times, was does, what does it mean for something to exist? There's two ways. One is material ontology. Material ontology means there's something material that is there. The cell phone exists. Why? There's physical evidence that it exists. And there's another ontology. It's called functional ontology. Functional ontology means something exists only when it functions already. Before it function, it does not exist yet. 
That is what functional ontology is all about. And I submit ancient cosmology, the ancient understanding of the beginning of things, is a functional ontology. Now, why do we say that? Again, for us to understand this, we have to look at other ancient documents. The old civilization of summer, the old civilization of Mesopotamia, all the writings there shows that something exists only when it functions. All right? By the way, uh, after this message, you can really ask me questions. <laughs> um, you know, because I, I had to take out a lot of things because I don't want this to be too technical, but feel free to ask me questions after. Now, there is a difference now between a creation of a chair and a creation of a company. A creation of a chair is what? A, a physical, material ontology. A creation of a company is a functional ontology, right? When you create a committee, what's that? Material or functional? Functional. When you create, you, when you, if I tell Bettina, create a curriculum, it's a functional, right? Or, you know what, Rafael, when you entered, you created a havoc. Functional. Havoc. There's no physical thing. And, and, and that is what I want to, to say. They, they, the ancient people only knows something exists when that something is functioning already. When it is not functioning yet, to them, it has not been created yet. It's just there with no purpose for it to, to be to be created, it has to have benefits to me, is their understanding of things. So what does it mean for someone in the ancient world to say that a world, something existed? It is, it is not by having something physical, it is by having something that is functional. Is what ancient cosmology is all about and the ontology of things in the ancient time is functional ontology if you look at a computer right a computer you you build the parts is that a computer not yet some people might say Okay, after the computer is there, all the CPUs, blah, 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 is there. I'm not familiar really. The screen is there. But there's still no program that say, oh, it's not a computer yet. All right, you put a software, you put a program, and yet you say, but there's no electricity. It's not running yet. Is it a computer? To the ancient people, no, it's not. Yes, it's physically there, but it's not, it's not functioning. All right. There's a, there's a physical machine, there's a software, there's electricity, but there's no guy that uses it. To them, it is not existing yet. It is only when they experience the benefit that they consider something already existing. So if you look at ancient ontology, the Egyptians writing, you would notice that at the beginning of things, creation in the ancient writings, apart from the Bible, huh? apart from the Bible, does not start with there's nothing. Egyptian writings on, on uh, creation does not start with nothing. Even Sumerian writings does not start with nothing. It starts